<laughs> oh. Didn't see you there. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the history of oceanography. I am your host, Elena. We'll put my partner in the credits. Well, my friends, as long as you're here, let's talk a little bit about the history of oceanography. First ever recorded voyages. You might think they're the Polynesians or the Greek or the Europeans because they seem to do everything first. All three are wrong. It's actually the ancient Egyptians. Records are a little dodgy, but they say they might have started voyaging around 5,000 to 800 BC. The ancient Egyptians, though, are the first recorded voyages. The kind of boat they used is called a felucca. Say that three times fast. The felucca is usually a small boat with a triangular sail. The more you know. And second, but certainly not first, are the Polynesians. They were said to have traveled the oceans about 2,500 BC. It's a really long time. But it's said that these peoples would travel from island to island, going kilometers across nothing but ocean. Quite the impressive feat for their time. It said that they would develop maps based off of the stars that look much like today's maps, just bigger and made out of sticks and rocks. It said they traveled to avoid overpopulation. Ah, and the Greek, everyone's favorite yogurt makers. For the first person to introduce, oof, math. Math and sailing? Ah, I guess it worked out for them because this Greek philosopher guy was able to figure out the ocean's tides based off moon phases. So all you surfers out there know who to thank. The Phoenician. Unlike the Polynesians who could tell based off of waves, clouds, and birds, they could only tell off of the stars. They would wait until nightfall so that they could actually navigate. They would stay very close to land. Not a lot of open ocean where they were. Ah, check out this little footnote in history. Eratosthenes. It only worked from about 200 to 100 BC, but he furthered the other philosopher's work. Oh, looky here. Dude was good with math. He was able to calculate the circumference of the Earth. 40,000. Hmm. It's a lot smaller than I thought it'd be. Guess it is a small world after all. More Greek! Amazing! Uh, this guy's name was Ptolemy. The P is silent. Ptolemy. <laughs> Created the world's first atlas. Man. No matter which way I turn it, it's not accurate. So he had a little bit of improving to you, but he was the first. Like the coat. This must be the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages wasn't exactly a big time for oceanography. In fact, it was more of a standstill. No voyages, no sailing. It was mostly Europe worrying about Europe and staying on land. I guess people were so worried about not dying from the Black Death and, you know, wars and long live the Queen. Too busy to even bother. That was weird. I could have sworn I was a knight a few seconds ago. Good evening. As you can probably tell, I'm in a traditional Viking war paint and a cloak. Do not fear, I am of Viking descent. The Vikings. 
It's time for me to finally sing the song of my people. They started their voyages around 995 AD. And there's this guy, check him out. Lef. Leaf? Lef. Erickson. He's actually the true founder of America. He just call it Vinland. Or I guess in Viking, it means Newfoundland. Creative of him, I know. Hmm. Ah, Arabia and China. Oh, they were on the move too. It says here that Arabia was far more interested in Africa and other parts of Asia. You know, India. They got all the good spices. And China was more busy moving west. Guess they didn't really want anything to do with Japan. I mean, just a bunch of islands, am I right? <laughs> what even is that? Ah, oh, it's the first compass. Check this out. It says that it was a magnetic spoon. The spoon would always point south. I wonder if that works. Now, this is a science class. Let's do an experiment. Spoon, plate. Gotta get that energy. Let's look up if it's pointing south. Um, we just checked our compass. It is actually pointing south. <laughs> oh, okay. The one thing I learned from that is to never be a skeptic. Unfortunately, my friends, I will be a Viking for the rest of the video. You see, this face paint does not come off. <coughs> I will show up to school Monday looking like a smurf and I want none of you to question me. Ah, <coughs> oh, cook. Let's talk about this guy. It says here he sailed in the 1700s. That's a pretty big time skip from the uh the Vikings. The face paint is never coming off, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> He was the first European to visit Hawaii. Man's made it pretty far from his home country. Three of his voyages were super important and he made a lot of scientific discoveries along the way. Science, science, science. Ah, here we go. Here it says he was carrying a naturalist. What kind of naturalist? Guessing the school appropriate kind. Ah, oh, and he was like the first to use this little compass doodad. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting thing. Right there, check that thing out. Nice. Ah, uh, here we go. The legend of two ships. Well, it's not a legend. Actually, it's just two ships. The Beagle and the Challenger. Ah, oh, let's talk about that old dog, the Beagle. It says here that this beauty sailed in the 1800s. Apparently, it was fairly common for boats to have a naturalist at that time. Oh, check it out. The naturalist for the Beagle was Charles Darwin. Oh, a naturalist is a scientist. Oh, hey, check it out. Charles Darwin collected plankton. Definitely not as weird as I thought it would be. Ah, and here we are, the Challenger. It says here it was the longest purely scientific expedition. Ah, for something purely scientific, they went everywhere but the Arctic. Apparently it was originally a Royal Navy vessel, converted into a, obviously, voyaging scientific vessel. Oh, hey, looks like we're in the 19th and 20th century. Even my book modernized, how cool. 
I guess, uh, blue war paint doesn't fade over the centuries, huh? Oh, well. Now we have this really cool new thing called sonar. It means we can detect things on the ocean floor. You know, mountains, coral reefs, even fish. And now they're taking marine biology really seriously. They opened up, up, up a bunch of institutions. Or as the challenger coined the term, oceanography. Hmm. Check it out. Some of the governments even started passing laws about the ocean. You know, territories, what country owns what. And it ha even has these little strips that are solely for economic purposes. Trade routes, probably. Kind of like the olden days, but modernized. And they passed some new laws, too. Preventing pollution and all this other funky stuff that could possibly harm our oceans. And second, but certainly not first. <laughs> <laughs> and second, but certainly not first. <laughs> and second, but you put it on. What? <laughs> and the Greek. Everyone's favorite yogurt makers. Don't you dare. <laughs> And the Greek. <laughs> War paint. It's called the itching my nose. <clears throat> Says here that the Beagle sailed from 1800s. From the 1800s. Restart. Ah. Uh, let's start with that old dog. The beetle. The beetle? <laughs> what? what? <coughs> oh, it means that they can contact. I'm sorry, the puffer fish distracted me. Look at him! Look at him! He's so cute! 